Okay, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our monthly voice call to club uh, meeting. And uh, we have five people on the line right now. We have uh, Bapi Pit, Payum, uh, Perindra, Sama, and, and Fajar, of course. Okay, who's going to start the uh, presentation? Or, or maybe we, we would. Are we going to set the the question? I, I don't have the template of the question from uh, our last meeting. It can be your own question. I mean, what you're curious about. Mm. Take your time because not many. Okay, is there any idea for the question? I, I will contribute one question is how 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 did you end up reading this book okay anything else oh. um, the best key takeaway mm. Maybe some opinion, maybe some something that you disagree with the topic. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Koyum already provided the question. Oh, okay. oh no, you yeah. can provide also. Yeah, we can choose. We can choose which one we're going to answer from this question. Just give an idea. Just to give an I idea. I don't know if this is my impression. The fajar is often pilok, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Fajar. Uh, Fajar is often what? Pardon? Pilek. Has flu. Oh, yeah, because I have allergy and there are so many dust. <laughs> you have allergy, yeah? Yeah, I have allergy. I, I have sinus. Okay. Okay, I was going to start. I think we can start with the presentation. With the sharing. Are you? Presentation sounds too uh, formal. Sharing is my my book today is quite I would say technical. If you guys are okay with that, should be good for me to start first. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you very much, our moderator, ladies and gentlemen. Right, Kayum here. So today, uh, for the past one month, I read about a Facebook and Twitter marketing book. So, uh. Uh, long story short, the book was about how do you going to use Facebook and Twitter to market your product, and why am I end up reading this book is because it aligned with the interests of me on being a digital marketing a marketers. So now I am also. Um, in, involving myself on Canva partners. So where I learned how to design posters or social media posts or being the Facebook banner and any things that related to designing things. But I am not a professional, truly not. So what does the book have inside? A lot of things here are written a step-by-step -step guide on how should I, like what kind of thing that I should go for, uh, like where should I start on opening a Facebook page, what is the next step and so on and so forth. And it makes uh, me feel like, ah, oh, I, uh, I stuck with the book for one month just to figure out where is where, you know, where, when, he, when the book say, uh, go here and, and click this, click that. So this is uh, why I stuck with the book for one month. And I have learned around 60% what is in the book because it is fun. And number two, it is in Bahasa, Bahasa Melayu. So easy for me to understand. And what would be 
the best key takeaway from the book? Other than giving a step-by-step -step on creating a Facebook page, creating a, account, a Twitter account for businesses, it also tell me the do's and the don'ts. And uh, this book was sharing the do's and the don'ts at the back, uh, the last chapter, the last two chapters. And also that it will help me out to figure out what can I do or what can I ask to my client later on if they want to promote their product and what should I not ask on things like the disadvantages, like they are maybe like what we call uh, loss of you know money and then other things or related to personal interests of myself. So it is a good book for me. In terms of why did I want to read? Because I want to be a digital marketer. And then the quotes, there is no quotes in the book. I'm so sorry, guys, because it is a technical book. So, And then the last but not least, what do I don't like about the book? It is not up to date. That's it. It is not up to date because right now we are moving so fast but the book stays still. So whatever is in the book, you know, it remains in the past. So it's, like I say, quite hard for me to find. Like, what, what, what is this? This is no more here. And then I would say like, oh, we, we never have this, you know? Yeah, if it's moving, I will also be scared about it, you know? And yeah, that's all about the book for today. And uh, if I can give a rate on the book, it will be, Nine, nine, ten. It will be nine, ten. Back to you, Iwan. Thank you, Kayum. So, uh, is there anyone interested to the question? Is question. Uh, does it mention anything about if you want to be a good digital marketer, you have to have art? talent something like that uh, what does it take can ordinary person be a marketer digital marketer yes can yes can and why why do canva or designing things have a relations to the book is that right, i i can be like you know someone your your kind of marketing assistant but at the same time if i want to say oh I, I'm going to create this one post, I can do into alternative, whether I am going to do it by myself or I'm going to ask people to do it for me. When you ask people to do it for you, people say like, oh, I charge this for a hundred dollars. I charge you for a hundred and fifty dollars per design. I mean, like if I can do, do the same design as you, I can get it cheaper, right? So that's why at the before I give it to people, let me try and doing the design thing by myself. Is it hard? Is it easy? If it's hard, okay, I would say the reason, uh, the, the charge that being asked by them or quoted by them is a reasonable charge because this is hard to do. And if, if I can do it by myself, I say like, it's okay. We're going to get to you back in the future for another design. This one, I can do it by myself. Yeah, some things like that. So is this something, the book is about the, the design, the trick, the tips of how this, to design po the post? Book, the book mostly, mostly uh, talking about how to create a page, how to set up your business account. Let's say, for example, if you have product, if you want to sell book, if you want to sell, you know, uh, Manis in the Facebook page, you know, you, it, it teaches you how to create those uh, particulars. Uh, the Canva part is where I am going to make the Este photo look more appealing in the shop. Yeah, that's only a plus point to uh, in the book. So, mainly, the this book shows the technical like step by step how to craft a Facebook page, step by step on how to find the correct audience. If you go for a paid account, you know, if you want to go for a boosting, uh, you boost your Facebook page. And your post in the in the Facebook, they, they, they teach us here. The, the Canva thing just now is not being teached in the book. I teach myself. 
through the Canva partners. Yeah. Hello, Mas Abdul. Hello. When was the book release? Uh, the year. That would be a very great question. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, that's why I say the the Facebook is moving on. The book stays yes. still. So much improvement and yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you you confused when you try the page right now. <laughs> true, true. And I I would not you know deny that because there is some of the things in the book were not anymore in Facebook, such as yeah. a, fan, a fan page for business. They don't do that. Uh, but way back before, if you want to be famous, like an influencer, they ask you to build, uh, or not, they ask you, you are going to build up a fan page rather than a page on me. Yeah. So it, I would say it is quite a while of this. No, no, the book is not updated. But uh, nonetheless, as like I said just now, this is a tool for me to use to equip myself later at the future. If the people are going to say, oh, I charge you this certain amount of money for doing this, right? If, if I already have this kind of knowledge and I would say like, uh, it's easy for me to do it, then if you charge me a, on a reason, not reasonable price for me, I will do it myself. Rather than I ask you, I will do it myself. That's it. Mm, a question, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, as far as I know, currently most use uh, social media are uh, Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. and Facebook. And uh, well, Facebook and Twitter, I think nowadays is not the most popular any anymore. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so I think that yeah, maybe it is much more effective to learn. As uh, apa itu digital marketing in in Instagram or TikTok, so, but uh, but in your opinion, how relevant uh, the book uh, for digital marketer today? Right, how relevant the book towards all the things that we have to do? I would say it's still relevant because why? Uh, for uh, for mass we don't know perhaps you might <laughs> for those who. First time see me here, I am not from Indonesia, ladies and gentlemen, that's one first. I come from Malaysia and where I came from, they don't even have like a Facebook page for their own businesses. So I will say if you if you want to make a businesses here and just to start up a Facebook page, you're going to get rich soon. <laughs> I will say that. And furthermore, uh, Malaysian people, they use Facebook a lot. They use Twitter a lot. How do we gain a viral news actually through Twitter rather than Instagram? You, you when I believe Fajar follow me in uh, in Instagram. When you see me in Instagram, that's just for fun. <laughs> but when you see me in Facebook, I share a real stuff and uh, I share like you know an up to date kind of things that where I go, what I do, you know. So Facebook is a thing for Malaysian, <laughs> yeah, and Twitter as well. Okay, so so that's a different culture, yeah. Mm. Usually, Indonesian prefer videos and photos, while Malaysians still enjoy text, Facebook and Twitter. So thanks for the relevance. All right. Yeah, I can I can suggest that uh, one book I read a few months ago. It's called uh, Marketing Rebellion. So I think it's very uh, get along with what the digital marketing now is doing because we're not uh, focused on the platform but uh, the the audience and the source of the information because nowadays I think uh, not many people trust anything that came out from the the brand the brand itself for example if, if you want to purchase a, a car for example like right now we have uh, Hyundai in the stargazer right but uh, no one is looking for a uh, hyundai website to get information about this product but uh, they just search in youtube and uh, find the influencer and then get more information from them because uh, they said in this book uh, the author said that uh, people trust people 
So they, they don't trust the brand anymore. They just uh, trust the people. So no matter what is the platform. Isn't that normal though? Because yeah. the brand is not objective, obviously, because they talk about themselves. They're trying to sell their stuff. Exactly. Exactly. If it's worse, then they don't have anything to gain, except when they are sponsored, of course. Mm -hmm. right? There are some reviewers who are sponsored. So, yeah. I think it's, it's natural if we take an objective opinion rather than from the marketing. Yeah. That is actually what happened in Malaysia nowadays. And uh, honestly, truth to be told, in Sarawak and Sabah, we have less opportunity like that. But if you are going to Semenanjung, Malaysia, which is in Kuala Lumpur area, oh, you can easily be a social influencer. And trust me, there are a lot of them, like, you know, Mitsubishi, Hyundai, Toyota, going to sponsor you to make those kind of videos and to sell their product. And I would not disagree with Iwan as well. I mean, like, that's true. That is what happening in Malaysia and we still, you know, in line with that. Yeah, it happens everywhere. <laughs> I, I hope that will be my next week if I can, the marketing rebellions, right? Okay, yeah, that will be my next week. Sure. Okay. Is there any more question for Ayum? I have a question related to my earlier question. Um, for some reasons, although someone already learned about the technicality, about how to make a good poster, a good advertisement, like that, in my opinion, if they don't have are artistic talent, then the result will not be as good, for example. I can learn about Canva mm -hmm. and I can be really good at it, but the placing of the letter or the choice of color that I that I usually choose, for some reason it's never good. I'm talking about myself, yeah. But when somebody else they just touch my design for five minutes and then change a little bit the placement of the letters and like that and suddenly it became totally different. Mm. It makes me wonder whether there's a talent involved in design like that. I I would say 50-50. Right. I would say 50-50. As a digital marketing, I hope that you guys are not working a lot. <laughs> you, I hope that, you know, I, I also not actually working a lot because what am I doing right now is trying to understand those tools that they have as a digital marketer itself so that when I understand this kind of tool like Canva, you know, Facebook page, Twitter account for businesses, and then the Instagram itself, when I understand them, so that when I meet a client, let's say, for example, when I meet a client and when they ask like, oh, I want to go for a Facebook page then, can you explain me more on how to do that? All right. And I will tell them the step-by-step -step on doing, uh, like say, we're going to post your post and then we are going to create a, a fundamental a funnel system of you how to increase the strangers from strangers to become aware of your product and they know about your product and how to make those people going to be your customers through the posting, through the uh, campaigns, through all the pits, uh, ads that we do just now, right? But at the same time, those who are doing that later on, I will communicate with them. How much would you charge me to doing this? And if they, they already send me sort of a sample of their works <clears throat> and uh, how much they charge for that, I will think again by myself. Am I going, is it worth for me to pay them back for those kind of amount? Am I going to still earn if I, you know, uh, pay them those kind of uh, money? And if I say yes to it's that, I mean, like, I'll just let them do it for me. I, I will be the person who are going to set all the marketing parts on the product, uh, on the services itself. Yeah. So is it going to be, you know, need to be artsy or not? Uh, I would say no. 
<laughs> when some people who have an RC is a plus point for them. Yeah. And in my uh, opinion, it's not just about the aesthetical uh, design, the, uh, the aesthetic of the design, but uh, the use of the keyword, which is uh, the keyword should should uh, should be something that uh, discussed by many people <clears throat> in. Uh, you mean the copywriting? The copywriting? No, not the copywriting. Uh, for example, I, I have a, uh, an example. I I usually after I, I reading I read a book, I post uh, the review to my LinkedIn profile. Sometimes not only book but articles I post in LinkedIn and. Uh, I use the same design for for what I'm the, the biggest the, the big point that I'm I'm, I'm sharing, uh, but there's one one post that gets a lot of likes and reshared by many people, and the keyword there is inclusion, because you no know, we know we the diversity is big big being discussed everywhere. That's why the word inclusion is in inclusion is something that uh, attract people and then they. Uh, they're interested to share, to share with their network and then get more likes. You mean like the hashtags? Something it, like that, but it's in, in the content. Yeah, the yeah. I, to IG, Twitter, people search for that topic, they use the hashtag, right? Yes, something like that. Keywords, yeah. So keywords are important, guys. That's less <laughs> for me to... Keyword is important. Yeah. That's why the many YouTubers using the the current issues in, in their uh, posting because that's what people want to see. Stay relevant. Yeah, stay relevant. Yes, stay I, relevant. I I agree with that. <laughs> the, the latest one that I know in Instagram, the word of um, if you go for a keywords for a catwalk, if you go for a catwalk keywords in Instagram, that will appear an Indonesian zebra cross. Citayam. Citayam. Yeah, and I'll be like, okay, wow, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, the organizer got a scholarship from the Minister of Creative Economy. Hi. That's a very interesting. Yeah, that's why um, I mean, like, the reason why I want to learn all these tools at the same time, it protects me for, you know, just uh, uh, what we call paying money uh, to people that working with me without, at least I have the knowledge and I understand what is actually they are doing. Because I don't want to be, you know, cheated in one day later on in the future. Just say like, oh, you don't know what is. So uh, when that's why I read the book. At least I know what am I doing. Yeah. So all in all, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to read the book, you can find in Malaysia, I guess, uh, the book of Buku Panduan, Facebook and Twitter Marketing. Back to you, moderator. Okay. Thank you, Kayum. Okay, so already 2.38. Uh, let's move to the next. Uh, who's going to share now? Maybe Pak Iwan. Okay, I will share. Okay, the next one is me. Uh, I'm, I, will, I was reading this book. The Black, the Black Water. <clears throat> this is by Louis Doughty. So how I end up uh, reading this book is uh, I won a giveaway from, from the one of Instagram uh, who uh, regularly shared a book review and, and I, I joined the giveaway session and I won. And yeah, I, I started reading, I think in June, in June, but uh, finished in uh, July. So uh, this book is written by, I don't know, is, is she, a British or American, I'm not sure, but this book is uh, mostly take place in Indonesia. So there are there are three major major event here. So the first one is the uh, occupation of 
uh, Indonesia or previously Hindia Belanda ya, East Indies before the independence of Indonesia uh, in 1942. And then the next one is the uh, September 30th movement in 1965. And also the May 1998 uh, riots in Jakarta. So uh, this is the fiction, historical fiction, I would say, uh, because the, the the character is uh, fiction, but it took uh, the real event in Indonesia. So the the character, the main character is uh, John Harper. John Harper. He was a, um, I think he, he was a judge. So he he has he had a, a Dutch mother, but uh, Indo father. You know, Indo, you know, is a mix between Dutch and uh, Indonesia. <clears throat> and then uh, after the, so he was born in the concentration camp during the occupation of Japan to Indonesia. And in 1942, and then he had uh, several hard life uh, in America also. So not only Indonesia, but also it took place in America as well. Uh, before he was employed by an, uh, an institution. Uh, the institution is uh, working, I think uh, they, they work for a governance. Um, so he involved in the 1990, uh, 1965 uh, September 30th uh, movement. So if you know the story of uh, K30 SPKI in Indonesia. So after the the coup, coup and counter coup by uh, military in 1965, then there was a big massacre, yeah. uh, pembunuhan, yeah. Very, uh, a lot of uh, massacre. And uh, he was, John Harper was said that he, he gave the, the name of the list of the people who are uh, involved in PKI and also suspected in PKI. So he he feel he felt that uh, he had a responsibility for a lot of murder in Indonesia. So he he feel a lot of rasa uh, bersalah uh, guilty about what had happened in Indonesia and. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give a lot of spoiler because there is still uh, a lot of. But yeah, he he's he's trying to uh, to fight his feeling, uh, and then in 1995 and 1998 he also came back to Indonesia uh, to to secure uh, his institution's client. Uh, but then he screwed up the mission, and then he he had to waiting. He had, he had to wait for decision for, from the institution, and while waiting, he met a woman, where he he then fell in love with her, and then uh, she she tried to understand what kind of hard 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 life he had been going through, and yeah, it's kind of mix of. Uh, action and also romance as well in this uh, novel. Yeah, basically I like uh, the story, uh, uh, historical fiction, I like that. I, I read um, many historical fiction, for example, like uh, Tetralogy Pulau Buru by uh, Ramodi Anandatur. So I, I like uh, that books and yeah, there's still many, many others. But yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy uh, historical fiction because in historical fiction we can see uh, those events from the point of view, different point of view, especially from the people who experience through the story. So sometimes uh, it doesn't matter if it's it's not right or it's it's a lie about the story, but you can enjoy. Uh, Knowing the 
the history. Yeah, I think that's my sharing about this book. So I, I don't know. I, I give, I give this book a four out of five. Uh, during the, in the middle of the book, I I thought that I'm going to give three, but then something uh, not 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 plus plot twist yeah. Uh, but I think that's something that uh, interesting to know, and I give it four. Okay, is there any question from the audience here? What is the historical significance of this book? Just like for me, if I want to read a book, I want to make sure it has a certain historical impact or cultural, pop uh, culture, something like that. So, I want what makes you want to invest your time reading this book? Is there any? Historical uh, significance. Like that. Yeah. First, I because I I I cannot keep looking at this book uh, sitting in my bookshelf without being. <laughs> That's why I maybe this is the time I'm going to read. And then uh, the first chapter, I know that oh, this is in Jakarta in 1998, and this is written by non-Indonesian author. This become more interesting. I mean, uh, if historical fiction written by Indonesian author, I think it's something uh, usual, but if it's written by non-Indonesian or foreigner author, I think it's uh, more interesting to me. Yeah, although although if you if if you ask if you asking about how the details of the historical aspect in this book, uh, not many. Yeah, there there are many uh, public figures like President Sukarno, B.J. Habibie, uh, Suharto also mentioned here, but not in details, just how their decision impact the, the economy during that time, but not uh, too many details. Mm -hmm. Oh, first lah. Oh no no no! I I I am still thinking the question. I just admit myself. Oh, um, actually, this is a little bit uh, out of the topic, but um, is it correct uh, to say that we are? Uh, is it correct to say that Indonesian are colonized by uh, the Dutch for two hundred uh, three hundred and fifty because? Uh, during I think 200 years, it was mostly by the merchants, right? By the VOC, and it's just only the parts of the Indonesia. And at, at the latter part of the colonizations, the Dutch come in. Uh, but uh, but again, that's not the whole Indonesia, just just parts of that. So is it correct to say that we are colonized but for 350 years? Or is it just a oversimplification? Yeah, for me, the concept of country itself, I think it came later, like the United Nations. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think before before that, I think the concept of uh, country is still uh, way away. <laughs> That's why in in many uh, historical fiction that I read. Uh, we still don't know what what is Indonesia actually, and how big is the scope of Indonesia? Even if after after the Independence Day, the proclamation, uh, the area of Indonesia is only not 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 until Papua, just a small part of uh, Sumatra and Jawa and Kalimantan maybe. Yeah, I don't. Maybe other has can has another opinion. Other opinion for this. But of course, um, it's not going to be that exact, in my opinion, Fajar. Although, for example, BOC arrived only in Maluku that time, but Maluku is part of Indonesia. So if we cannot say like, oh, has to colonize from 
the Sabang until Merauke, then it can be called as colonizing Indonesia. That's very petty in my opinion. So it's like, you know, if you say like you hurt, you hurt my family, although in reality you only hurt my mom, it's for me it's the same thing. You hurt my family. So I think maybe when it when it comes to only a part of Indonesia, but considered as a whole, I think it's still valid. However, your the part about whether they actually colonized us, are uh, the Ochi was a what's that called the monopoly of company, right? So they also own a lot of plantation and uh, what is it called? Exploit Indonesia also, although started in spices and things like that. So in essence. It's the same as colonization. Just like when they colonized Africa, it also started as trading. Okay. But the line become blurred at some point. So when they started to be greedier and greedier, paying less and less, I think more and more land. So it's like the process was kind of organic. So that's still valid to be called 350 years. Okay, I think that answered the question. Thank you. Yeah, for 350, imagine if you were a Dutch and then you were born in Indonesia during that time, then you become confused. Where's my <laughs> nationality? Heritage. I was born in Indonesia. Because it was uh, named East Indies, so in this India Belanda, uh, is where is part of their country. That is well, what the, the East, parents. West the, Indies is India, right? So oh, East, really? East, yeah, East Indies is not east of Belanda, but Indies is from Indian Ocean, ah, I see. the Pacific. That's Indies is the Indian Ocean. So West Indies, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. East Indies is Indonesia. Mm. And Malaysia. I see, I see. But India was um, <clears throat> colonized by British, right? Yes, that's correct. Right, yeah. That's called, called West Indies. Indies. Yeah. So India is the Samudra India, that's Indies. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> Is the Malayu for Samudra? Eh, ocean is what is that in Malayu? Malayu. Ocean in Bahasa Malayu would be laut. 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 Only laut. Well, we we only have laut, but big ocean, not just the sea. If it's the sea. Samudra, samudra. Yeah, the word samudra. Ah, uh, for us will be we recognize it as a ship, a big ship. A big samudra. ship is samudra? Yeah. Wow. Oh, different. <laughs> you, you don't have word for Pacific Ocean, just Pacific Sea. Lautan Pacific. Oh, oh lautan. Oh, Maybe just lautan. 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 In Bahasa, we call it samudra. Okay. Is, is there any difference between laut and lautan? Nah, it's just... Uh, it's <laughs> um, just the same. Oh, I see. You know, you, you know like... When we say when we say word begin and we add the beginning, uh, yeah, something like that. Laut uh -huh. and lautan. Yeah. I I got one question, a small one question. Would you recommend me to read this book? And would you say those historical um story in it will be an accurate thing what is actually happened in Indonesia back then? Um if you're familiar with the history of Indonesia and then the, the darkest moment in, his, in Indonesian history, 1965-1998, I think yeah, you can you can enjoy this one. But if you don't, you're not if you're not familiar with the history, then I'm afraid that you're going to be uh, confused reading this book. <laughs> 
there's not much uh, the background of the of the historical fiction here just uh, for example like uh, you were just put in the middle of the the chaos during that time but you don't know what what was causing the, the chaos <laughs> but since i know uh, the background of the chaos and yeah i can get along with the story all right that 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 will be it <laughs> Okay, if there is no more question, we can move to the next. Going to present to share Fajar or Widodo? Maybe I want to share my. Arinda, is he is he alive or is that his uh, avatar? <laughs> like last time? No, it's me oh, alive. It's alive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Okay, that's Widodo. Welcome. <laughs> this is the club. I just want to share what I read is to you. Is there one of you ever read this book? Sorry again. I know the title. It's I know the title. Uh, you is, do uh, you. Alexandro, right? Oh yes. Alexandro Ruby. Alexandro Ruby, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I share some slide? To... Please, please. Yeah, wait. Wait a moment. Can I share voice? Yes, this is. Uh, okay, you can see it now. Yes, uh, there is uh, five. I think I want to share five things that can inspire me about reading this book. For the first time, is this book is uh, want you to get to know yourself. Even how you learn, what the best time for your mind, and I uh, fairly uh, talk about you don't need to ten thousand hours to be a master, but uh, he speak uh, he write about master in chess is just need. Uh, 700 hours to be a master so if you want to learn something new uh, you don't need 10,000 hours but you must be consistent to to learn what uh, to learn the skills and the key to learn is to know how you learn is that visual, auditory, read or write, or kinesthetic. It's some things that important to know. Uh, for example, I am a visual learner and kinesthetic learner. I can't, what, uh, what do you mean? Uh, I less understand when I read or write something, but when I saw something, I'm more understand. Like uh, when I read this book, uh, I read this book, and I make this presentation or make this. I think it gives me more understanding about this book. That's a that's a way. The way how do we know it? how we know ourselves and when uh, the best time for your mind fairly talk about wait wait for it fairly talk about the dolphin time fear time wolf time or lion time 
Is there any of you ever heard about this? Uh, something like when the dolphin is wake up and exercise in the early morning or lion is earlier uh, and when wolf, uh, wolf is uh, the good time for thinking is in the night. Uh, the time for your mind is different for everybody. So you must know what the time to be a productive person. So uh, there is something like that that the the uh, share for us in this book, and uh, he write about self awareness. I think there is some people that maybe offer confidence or about their self awareness. There is some. Uh, penelitian, some research, research about self awareness. Ninety five percent, ninety percent of people, when they ask about their self awareness, they confident say, "Yes, I have a great self awareness." In the reality. There is only 15% that have a great self-awareness. So in this uh, book, Fairly uh, talk about how to grow your self-awareness by knowing your priority. Uh, just uh, don't be overconfident, offer value about yourself. You need a lot of experience. You need a lot of uh, work to do and become a master to share something. When you share, you just uh, need to share what you know. Don't don't even uh, don't be like what what is it? When you learn something, there is something feeling that, uh, some feeling that you know everything, but in the reality, you just know nothing. And when you want to grow your self-awareness, you need a circle of trust, just uh, like uh, people that care about you, but willing to say no when you need it. Just like not always say yes for you, but when you get the wrong way, you being hard. That's, that's a circle of trust, not only pleasure people. And this is the kind of uh, what is uh, passion, uh, like uh, a young young person right right now is always talk about passion. No passion, no what what is it? No passion in work is nothing. I want to show passion. I want to. Everything is about their passion, but in this time, uh, Fele talk about ikigai. This is uh, what is it's from Japan. Uh, talk about how synchronize what you love, which are what you are good at, uh, what you can be paid for. Uh, right now is what is your job. And what the world needs. It must be seimbang. What is se balance? Uh, it must balance about what you love and what are uh, good at or what you can be paid for. And I think everyone can uh, want. I think everyone want to uh what is this uh just like uh berperan dalam dunia uh have have <laughs> uh, berperan oh, berperan memiliki peran di dalam dunia contribute. ini uh, 
contribute to the world. And I think when you not love what you do right now, when you stay relevant about your job or you learn something, the love can be what? Uh, muncul, muncul. Your love yeah. about your job yeah. is can yeah. appear. So passion is good, but usefulness is better. Uh, something uh, usefulness for uh, for partner, for your family, or for the world itself. Fail about multi potentialite. It's not like generalist, but multi potentialite is like master at several different things. Uh, in the past, you just know Ibn Sina. The, he is a mathematician. He is a doctor or uh, uh, anything. He could add several things in science. It's called multi-potentialite, and it's it's okay. It's okay for you to be master at several things. To all. Uh, we can burn eh, limit ourselves to be some one to be one uh, to be good at one things but you you can good at several things but you must persistence and consistence for it and uh, in this book is tell me about embracing the failure failure uh, life is will be accompanied by failure. That's what makes you. What we'll regret is not failure for trying, but for never trying. And the, la the last is failure is a process. Behind fail failure, there is learning. Uh, and nowadays, some people just like, don't want to be failure. It's it must be perfect. Even uh, at your study, even at your job, or even for your family. But I think we must know that we are process. We are doing process. So failure is something that we can we can hindari hindari hindari. What is it? We can avoid. We can avoid failure. Just uh, embracing the failure, not failure. And the last is building your new net network. Uh, the best investment is in yourself by study or uh, join community like this. Uh, in this community, I want to learn how to speak English well uh, and listen in English. Uh, so this is uh, my investment too, to join this community. And new network of your skill, influence, and help. Network is not just about money, because when we have skill, we can pay, uh, pay more. When we have more influence, just like uh, influencer right now, eh, we can be paid for. And the important thing is health. <laughs> if we are not health, we can produce anything. So the new network is about skill, developing skill, growing your influence, and stay healthy. So the money will follow you, and it's will grow up among your network. I think it is, I think it ends with it uh, from you to you. The author is Felix Sandro Ruti. Thank you. Maybe any of you have a question for my sharing? 
Yes, this is the way of life. It's personal development book. Thank you for sharing, Mas uh, with Dodo. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to the uh, word embracing Taylor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think sometimes we, in our environment, we are uh, told not to, to fail, not to fail, and mm-hmm. there is something that, uh, oh, most of time, makes us, uh, apa ya, uh, we don't want to move because we are afraid to do failure. Yeah. So the, I, I once read a, an article in Harian Kompas and uh, the title is Fail Often in Order to Succeed Sooner. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we want to succeed, I think we, we should we should fail. We should fail often because from the, the failure we can learn something. Maybe other audience has, has other comment or question. Ra- ration to... fail. The everybody have ration to fail. Uh, gagal. <laughs> <laughs> Too many failures juga gak bagus ya. <laughs> <laughs> we must we must learn uh, about our failure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. first lah. Yeah, I have a question. So yesterday I just attended uh, pembekalan wisuda for my university, and one of the guests was HRD manager, <laughs> and this HRD manager warned the wisudawan. Wisudawan is apa ya in English ya? Graduates, graduates kan? Uh, HRD manager warned the wisudawan if you go to interview do not look inferior do not feel inferior most people in Indonesia are inferior when they are asked about what's so good about you like what's your kelebihan <laughs> why should we hire you things like that it's hard for them to promote themselves. So can you imagine if most people do that? And so if you can actually be confident enough to talk about your achievements and what your good skills are, things like that, you can be, uh, what is it called? You can be different from the crowd. You can be, apa ya? what's the English word for it? Unique. Yeah, but more than just unique. You can be menonjol. Outstanding. outstanding. You mean like, a, yeah, oh, menonjol. What is menonjol in English? Yeah, in this case. Can be. Stand out. Stand out. Can stand out. Yeah. yeah, among the crowd. So, what's the difference in this case when the book said, do not be overconfident because you don't know anything. But if someone uh, internalize that type of feeling that we don't know anything, how should we promote ourselves when we are required to? So I think that's my question. Uh, what is the question? So the book, uh, suggested us not to be overconfident. Okay. Yeah, right? That's correct, right? It's one of the yes. points. It says, don't act like we know everything because actually we don't know anything. Oh, yes. All right. So then, how yes. do we deal with the fact that in the real world, we have to promote ourselves to get certain opportunity? Like, oh, yeah. if a job, promotion we are competing with other people so we cannot be inferior so how don't be inferior but not too overconfident uh in this book uh i mean that we are not the be over overconfident is 
like they have a dunning Krug dunning Krug effect. Well, uh, I think the the confident is when you has just started. This is the learning curve that when you are started, you just feel like knowing not everything. But eventually, you just know the little bit because you have to start. So when you have the feeling that you know everything, you want to share to everybody. But uh, it's it's just a warn to be don't over confident uh, about the things that you just learn. So you need to more experience to more, I think just uh, read, read more books or uh, growing up your skill, uh, implementing what you read, uh, just like that. Uh, so not, uh, not uh, to hold your confidence about yourself to promote, promoting yourself in work, but when you has just learned, uh, you must hold it first. You must, what is it? Uh, you must doing something or you have to experience something. So you can, you can, uh, what is it? After you learn and learn again and learn again, you know that you, you are known, know a little bit. There is some, Thing big that you don't know. Uh, I think Pele uh, want to talk about that about this. Uh, and I, I agree with uh, Pipit uh, talking about in Indonesia we are difficult to promote ourselves because I think kita bisa dikatakan sombong. <laughs> We are afraid to be uh, being called uh, arrogant or uh, too proud of ourselves. But in the professional, I think we must know how to promote ourselves because uh, I learned from for my manager uh, that is they always promote. She or he always promote what he's doing, what the uh, the office doing, what the people, what, what the innovation, what the program that she has. Because what, what she's done is different uh, from the other's manager, uh, like uh, head office, the other office. So I think it's good because the top level can, uh, the top level of manager management can see that this could add it. But the most of people, I think in my office, not like what she's doing. It's just, it's, she is too proud of herself. She is uh, to what is it called? Melebih lebihkan to being. Then out if we learn how to promote ourselves, <laughs> I agree with that. Thank you, baby. Maybe I like. Uh, just like that. Yeah, I think it's different different context, yeah, Mbak Bibit, yeah. For <laughs> I think for yeah. job interview, yeah, we, we should uh, promote our achievement, our our what we uh, have been uh, doing so far. But in context of uh, self development, it's the difference between fixed mindset and growth mindset. Overconfident usually related to the fixed mindset. Because we we think that we know everything, it's like a, a a glass full of water, and we just feel that we we know everything and don't want to learn anything else. 
Can I ask a I, question? I, oh yes, yes. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, the the book mentioned about the ikigai and chasing your passion, but what about a person who are already in a family because um, most of them already have financial obligations and time limitation to chase their patients. Uh, let me give you example. So I have a friend uh, in my master degree. He got married uh, when he is still studying and then he got a kid. <laughs> and because of the financial obligation, he have to quit the master uh, degree and he also have to do multiple jobs in order to fulfill their family need. So at the same time, he said that he, he still want to pursue his, his separation, but he cannot do it. So is there any good solution for that? Uh, in my opinion, it's just like, uh, we, we try to uh, balance the ikigai. But I think when we have uh, what is called, I think when we have uh, something different background, we must uh, we must embrace ourselves. We must know uh, ourselves. When we, for example, because of financial obligation, you he he cannot. Uh, Study lanjutan. What is uh, carry on his study in master degree, but uh, I think we must uh, we must keep trying to balance it when we don't have. Uh, what is uh, when we have a, we don't we have a job but not good pay. I think we have to develop our skill to increase our uh, what is our our wages or when we have a good wage uh, good which is uh, which and we have done time for family we we will try to balance it so i think ikigai is just like a uh, what is uh kaya a goal uh ikigai is a perfect goal but i think we can balance it we can achieve we can't achieve it perfectly but nearly i think when we pay and could pay it's for me it's enough so uh the world i think i don't want to be a part of a good for the world uh just being good at my family or paid good i think it's enough so uh maybe i i don't want to be perfectly ikigai uh, about what is ikigai cool but between two or three of ikigai is my goal. Uh, i can achieve that uh, so maybe uh, our ikigai is different what is uh, for everybody is different just just stay relevant, of, 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 not relevant, just can you enjoy? I think it is about enjoying your life, about family, work, or something else. Uh, it's maybe like that. <laughs> it, this, this is my, my opinion, uh, maybe, the others have others opinions about mass future friends <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I think passion. Um, An accident, right, Fajar? Uh, no, not accident. He just want to get married very quickly for some reason. <laughs> no idea why. <laughs> what we want and the reality. So I, I want a job wife. Right? I want a job wife. Your voice is breaking. Maybe really? I, I don't know whether, whether is it is your uh, microphone or. The jackpot, I would say. Yeah. Oh, we can't hear you at all. <laughs> yeah, at all? Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay, now, okay. Clear. It's clear. No, I cannot hear you. But <laughs> so I think I have to balance between what we want and the reality. Like, so I want a Jaguar car. Right? But I know it, that I cannot afford it. If I can afford it, I have to pay installment for 20 years or something. Maybe that. So I think. What we want is not always the best. Preferable, master degree. Maximum is two years. Maximum is two years. So if I were your friend, I would wait until I graduate. If I know my finance is not stable just yet. Two years is not a long time. Uh, unless you are productivity year or something, but your friend from the same age as you, not that old, right? <laughs> So, if it's not urgent, I would prioritize to finish the degree first after that getting married. Because in the end, you can achieve both of them with the correct time. So, I think that, that's one that. What I think about that, I think having the kid was quote unquote an accident, I guess. <laughs> I thought of <laughs> their plan, in my opinion. But I, I cannot. I can I cannot confirm that. I I got one question is to Mas Widodo perhaps. Now you have read those books, right? And and I was interested on reading this too. I would like to know how does your daily life right now impact uh, like what 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 is already happens to your current alive is it going to be better or is it going to be you know declining or how uh i think i still grow up uh, i i like starting something new or just like when when i know what i'm best at it uh, what what the time to learn or what my style to learn I think it's helpful. And right now, I just want to build some new network. Just I, I upgrade my skill or I learn new skill. Uh, maybe there is no, nothing uh, what is, uh, in, in, the, in my my income is not grow up in this time but I know uh, there is when I have new skills or upskilling uh, I think my income will follow and I have a better influence in my office or yes Maybe the health is just, I try to be healthy. So I think when I, uh, I have, uh, I just have read this book. I, after I read this book, I stay, want to grow. And it's good for me because I want to learn something new, something different skill, or uh, upskilling my 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 skill too. Maybe, maybe like that must happen. I think it's very good for me <laughs> the impact from this. All right. 
I guess I guess I I, I would try to find the book as well, and I will continue yeah. as a self development book like what uh, must Iwan say just now. You do you, Iwan. Yeah. You do you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Mister King. <laughs> So it is three thirty, and we still have uh three presenters still need to present. Uh, okay, who's next? You know what? Karindra, I want to keep it. Jar's book and my book. We have known each other, I guess. So let's sorry. Karindra, Jar and I already know each other's book. So let's start with Karindra. Okay, Karindra. I'm sure. Uh, yep. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Long time no see you guys. Okay. For this time, uh, the last book that I have finished reading was Midnight Library. So it's a fictional book by Matt Haig. Uh, how I ended up reading this book is, yeah, I saw the book uh, recommendation ever since 2020. And there are, uh, there are so many good review regarding to these books. I've already added this as my uh, wish list to read, but I've just got time to read it uh, last month. I, uh, firstly, I don't have any knowledge about this book before. I only read the, uh, the synopsis uh, the short, uh the short one so i don't have so many knowledge about this book what is it about and yep i think that that was my uh good decision to not knowing too many knowledge about this book so i can enjoy it uh more and the key lessons uh, actually, a reading of fictional, I don't expect any key lesson, right? I only want to entertain myself, but somehow I found an interesting key lesson from this book related to uh, not over regretting something and also not uh, uh, knowing that you live in a reality world, you're, you, you're not living on a uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe world where you can travel to other universe or you can go back uh, in a previous time to turn something, something like that. You can do something like what if, what if, like if you if you watch Marvel uh, series, there there is one called what if and you cannot do something like that. So there's no, uh, there's no benefit of over regretting something and what has been done. Yep, that's it. You can just go on with your life. Uh, quiz, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. And yeah, uh, what's the best quote from the book? Uh, it's fiction also. Not many interesting quotes, at least for me. Uh, but I've, I've made uh, some highlights in my Kindle uh, for this book. Yeah, this one. Uh, so this this quote. Sometimes regret aren't based on fact at all. Sometimes regret are just uh, a lot of BS. Yep, <laughs> that's one in one hell of interesting quote that I found. And it's on the beginning. Uh, it's on the early page of this book, and that makes me de decide to okay go on to read and finish this book. Anything I don't like about the book? No, I think it was my first five-star book in this year. Uh, yeah, I really like this book a lot. That's why I I started to look for another Matt Haig book. Yep. How did the book impact you? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's by coincidence or maybe God also... Uh, um, God also have his scenario uh, to make me read this book because uh, it quite relate for me. Like 
uh, recently a past few months ago i made uh, some bad decision in my life and yeah i'm starting to reg to regret that decisions and and somehow reading this fictional book that i don't uh, expect any motivational quotes or inspiring quotes i just want to entertain myself but instead i got both i get entertained by this book and also i get uh, some interesting point of view about the regret stuff that somehow related to me at that time yeah that's i think that's the short uh, share from me related to this midnight yep as long as you did not marry the wrong person you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one <laughs> yep that's one uh, short share for me about this book I believe you don't want me to spoil the book the story because I recommend this book to anyone who haven't read it or anyone who like a fictional book yep I have a that's all for me so I often see Midnight Library is on the recommended books. All yep. the mm -hmm. Harry Plus, Goodreads, uh, Amazon book. Amazon, yeah. Like always on the top page. And can you give us a comparison? This book is as good as what book? So is there any other book you can compare this book to? So we can decide whether we want to read it or not. Hmm. Like sebagus uh, apa, you know? Okay, I think it's maybe there. There are also some personal, some subjective opinion as well. Since, like what I said earlier, this book is kind of really in my situation at that time when I read this book. This way, I give it five stars. So maybe there are also. Uh, subjective uh, opinion that affected me but if if you ask me what kind of uh, what good is this book um, I'd like to say The Alchemist but I think it's quite different because I, I heard some of my friends also don't like Alchemist that much uh, yeah yeah uh, that's why I could not uh, compare it to Alchemist, even though I also uh, like the Alchemist. But it's such a different because uh, this this book is not not that fantasy books. I mean, not that fantasy like the Alchemist, where the background is the uh, Gurun Pasir and something like that. But it's kind of a current a uh, present time but fictional in some other way yep and unfortunately i also have a few books to compare to so yeah i could not compare it to other books so i have read this book and oh yeah but one can is, help me answer is, that maybe this is that good, <laughs> <laughs> this really? good. Okay. yeah the, maybe if, if comparison i don't know if you ever read this book uh, the time traveler's wife have you read that I watched one? the movie though uh, oh yeah that's the movie yeah, yeah. i i watched it, i watched the movie and then read the novel uh, or maybe yeah my 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 fiction reading is kind of weird that's why some people <laughs> don't read compared to perfume i haven't read that wait what's the book you read last time you said it was perfume that thing the poison guy the guy who makes no. That was not me. <laughs> oh really? I thought it was my one. Okay. <laughs> so I, I want to comment on the, if Ferindra said that there there's because this is fiction, so there's not much quote in this book. But I I would say that there are a lot of quotes in this, and I'm I'm opening oh. my Kindle now, and there there are some I want to share. So there's a quote here. Sometimes the only way to learn is to live. Oh yeah, because, yeah, I also because in the story, one. because in the story, the main character Nora Seed is was uh, 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 suicide, yeah, <laughs> overdosed, and then 
she moved to other dim dimension and when where she can try uh, and and she she was taken into a big library with uh, many books and each books is contains each book contains her story of life if she choose another option in the past that's why there are a lot of uh, many possibility and she tried many of them that's the story about them yeah i think uh if i uh, read uh, the time traveler's wife i can uh, move to different uh, timeline and then and i think that's kind of similar but different different uh, contexts yeah but i think that's pretty much sums up the story about <laughs> yeah and if if I, I i i after reading midnight library i also uh, search for other Matt Haig uh, novel, and I would suggest uh, How to Stop Time. It's also a good one. Yeah, I also finished that one. <laughs> yes! Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Before I read How to Stop Time, I'm sure I will be disappointed. Oh, different, different, <laughs> different, different. Yeah, different, different, different context here for, for uh, How to Stop Time. How to Stop Time is like, how to stop, <laughs> right? It's like the, the, <laughs> like the stopping time for their miss. <laughs> stopping time yeah. for them. But how to stop time is a, a Highlander style, Highlander like story. So mm, it's a, yeah. a person who lived 400 years <laughs> and experienced many, uh, many uh, events in the history. Well, guys, if you are interested about those, uh, I recommend this movie called Men from Earth. Men from Earth. Yeah, the book, the movie is amazing. It's only conversation, only in one room a conversation, but the conversation is very deep, and the person. I'm not gonna spoil it, but yeah. <laughs> I I watched the, I watched the ads on Men on Earth under Netflix, yeah. right, yeah, and then I also watched the Time Traveler Wife uh, by Ivan just now, and it's it quite interesting actually, and I, I bet that I, I would not be like you guys, <laughs> I can't understand that, because it takes time for me to understand the story itself, the, the line of the story, because if you want to ask me like what kind of movie I was into, or I would say documentary, the, the thing that was short of fun facts and the factual things so yeah and i i i will give it a try to read this book too even though it is a 300 pages but it's in malaysia the book is in affordable price for 300 pages so i'm going to go for that one one, one moment or one one thing that farindra i, I would like to know one uh, after you read books right what would be the one part in the book that you will still remember and you want to share with others? 300 pages of book is quite long, I would say. And then what is part in the book that you would love to share with us? Part of the books that I'd like to share, yeah, the conclusion when Nora said the, the main characters found out that uh, regretting and wondering what life could be in other universe or other other kind of me like if I'm doing this if I was doing this way instead of that way yeah wondering something like that will just Ooh, is it like the butterfly effect wasting your time yes it's like it's, the butterfly effect it's different I think different different way in a different way. almost almost the same thing, like change yes. everything almost like oh yeah yeah, yeah. Effect. okay yeah. if at that point of view yeah that's that's similar the the small decision will also have impacts on any parts of your lives so the things that uh interesting is when or has it realized that when uh when you change uh small parts of your decision there are also any impacts not only for you but also any people around you or people that you don't even know yeah just like if you if you ever saw avengers when you when you change some reality in one of the universe 
it will change anything also. It doesn't have to. We thought it was going to be better. Yeah. But in the end, we it don't. Even worse we don't, or yep. the same. It could be worse or it it's could really be accurate. better or no, no, no. I think not only worse or not only better, just other version that maybe we don't switch living in that way. Yep. So there's no need to re of regretting, just living on. Hello. Okay, I think that's all for me. If there's any, anything, anyone want to add anything? Uh, I want to some ask some question, Mas. Uh, what my question, Mas Perindra? Okay. What the what the story that you like? Uh, maybe just there is a lot of a lot of what is it called a lot of life from Nora. It, is this right? Uh, the the person is Nora. Eh, yeah, no, Nora. No, Nora. 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 What is the story that you like? What one story that you like about uh, Nora life? There is uh, a lot of life that he tried. Eh, she, she or he mm -hmm. tried. She, yeah. What is okay. it? Must very. Mm, most interesting story. Uh, maybe when she she suddenly went into the middle of the sea in the Arctic and she had to fight the polar bear there. Yeah, and that and she also met someone that, yeah, made made she realize something. In that in that place in that life, you don't want to spoil that. Right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank thank you, Mas Belinda. Yep. Sure. Okay. Is there any question? Okay, we can move uh, either either uh, Mbak Pipit or Fajar. Okay, do you wanna rock paper scissors? Rock paper scissors. Rock paper scissors. Wait, maybe you go first, lah. I wanna eat. Okay. <laughs> Man. okay, okay. So uh, this one I listened to an audio book when I was on the plane. The book is called Jeremy Scott, and I already presented this uh, in my other book club, and Fajar had read it. Okay, so this is the book, Jeremy Scott, Biography. So before I start talking about the book, uh, is there anyone, just want to check, is there anyone here who know who Jeremy Scott is? No, no, no. Tidado doesn't know? No idea. Okay. We don't know it's frozen on my screen, but okay. So we don't know, you don't know who Jeremy Scott is? No, okay. So um, I have this environmental platform. Uh, I asked some, I think most of you to subscribe by force. Actually, Pak Iwan won a giveaway on the first week I launched it. Yes, so. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> if you have not subscribed, please subscribe Lingkungan Q. Um, so this platform is talking about environmental issues. And Jeremy Scott is actually related to environmental issues, but in an odd way. So Jeremy Scott is a fashion designer. And if you have heard of Mos Moschino, Moschino, the brand, um, he was also the head of director for Louis Vuitton, all of this high fashion industry, right? But Moschino is his own brand right now. And this brand became famous for using recycled materials to produce high fashion. What we call high fashion is clothes that are very expensive. <laughs> yeah, you know, Versace and, you know, Louis Vuitton, all of this. But Jeremy Scott was unique because he managed to convince people that recycled materials can also be uh, high fashion products. 
And that time people thought he was crazy. Like, Are you kidding? Why all of these rich people want to buy recycled clothes, right? And then he said, just watch. <laughs> just watch. And then he proved that uh, actually a lot of people supported him. And until now, Moschino is actually is quite a famous brand. So Moschino, if you see Moschino, this one, which is Moschino. Usually in fashion TV, things like that, you know, in Indonesia also available the um, the perfume and things like that. Anyway, that's Moschino. So the reason I'm interested because it was available on the plane for me to listen to and then it's related to environment. That's why I listen to it. And I found that actually a lot of lessons about how to be successful. Okay, because he was homeless once. Actually one time, he slept on the streets of Paris for one year. But now he became very successful and very uh, like a millionaire, I would say, right? So there are the lessons is number one, it's also related to the quote. Most people do not know who they are. So if you already found out who you are, do not change for anyone. That's it. So if you, we already know our jati diri, our our identity that is very precious and we have to consider ourselves lucky so do not change for other person well the reason is because uh, this is also uh, a bit controversial but he knew he was gay <laughs> since he was five years old probably uh, he was only interested in male friends basically and he lives in a small town in Kansas City. As you imagine, in Kansas City, in uh, Missouri, in US, is a small like a countryside. Okay? So a lot of fans bullied him because he looked like a girl, basically, right? But he did not. Um, he kind of persevered. Like he took the bully without any. Um, not resistant, like uh, it did not change him. Like even his parents pressurized him to change, but he did not change basically. So that's, he said, because his identity was precious. Well, I think that is the one. Although it does, I'm not advocating for gay people, but if we know our identity, I think it's uh, better hold on to it. Second, uh, we have to have a long plan to achieve what we want. So for a long time, he always wanted to, he had always wanted to be a fashion designer. So he studied French and Japanese since middle school until high school. So most people, if they already know what they want, they do not, they do not plan a long haul, right? But he already planned it since he was in middle school because he know, okay, the center of fashion in the world other than the US is Paris and Japan. France and Japan that time. So he already planned how to be an international fashion designer by learning French and Japanese since teenager. That's the second one. The third one is sometimes we have to take a huge risk. So when he was 18 or 19, he left his comfort home in misery and then moved to France. That time he did not have any money, did not have any job. Actually, for the whole year, he lived, he lived on the street of Paris. His job was cutting hair for fellow homeless people. So he would cut someone's hair and then they give him food as, uh, as payment and sometimes coins. But you know what's crazy? He did actually have good skills. So he cut his own hair. The hair style is very unique. And he had be to stand in front of a famous discotic or pub in Paris. And you know, that's why is the marketing director of Louis Vuitton saw him. And this marketing director of Louis Vuitton said, where did you get that haircut? <laughs> I don't know what type of haircut it was. There was no photo, but it was unique enough that would make 
the marketing director of Louis Vuitton, who happened to just pass by, took interest in him. And then he said, I cut it myself. And then, you know, Jeremy Scott said, I cut it myself. And that's the next thing you know, he got offered a job at Louis Vuitton. <laughs> so this is called the lucky, yeah? this is almost a lucky incident. But after he worked for Louis Vuitton, starting at the lowest level, entry level in the marketing, he proved his talents and skills that gradually he become at the top in the fashion uh, design personnel. That he moved to other uh, top board and all of the other, you know, but he managed to climb the corporate ladder in Louis Vuitton. So the lesson from that one is, although sometimes we are given some certain type of luck, serendipity, we call it, but that is not enough. So after we get a chance, we still have to prove ourselves to be able to because he could just stay as the marketing uh, persona, right, at Louis Vuitton and never advance. But he managed to advance until the top. So I think that's the, the lesson. And then the last one is do not um, be afraid to try a crazy idea. A lot of people think his idea was crazy when he made clothes from recycled materials. And also when he made the name of the collection as cheap and cheek. Cheap and cheek. Can you imagine people want to buy cheap and cheek? But his market supposed to be middle class and above. <laughs> Who wants to buy cheap and cheek, right? Because they want it to be sound expensive. But in reality, people bought his products. <laughs> so he said when your idea has never been done before. It's either it's really bad or it's really good. If no one has done your idea, it's either it's really bad or it's really good. So it's worth trying. So I think that's the last lesson that I got from Jeremy Scott. And then Fajar know about this, and I'll discuss it with other uh, group club. Uh, it also reminds me of Robert Eager, the CEO of Disney. If you have read the book, Right of a Lifetime. He also got his job based on luck that time, right? Because his uncle was hospitalized and he, the uncle shared the same room with the one of important people at NBC television. And then the uncle just asked, well, I have a, a nephew who is looking for a job. Do you have a job at NBC? Oh, well, yeah, sure. And just give the job without even meeting Robert Iger. <laughs> so that was a lot, serendipity. But after he got the job, then he got promoted, 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 and finally became the CEO. So we can get all the serendipity we want, but in the end, it's our own uh, effort that can bring us to the top. So that's probably the last thing. That's it. Thank you for sharing, Titi. Uh, is there any audience want to ask question? One small just, question. Have you buy yes, their I products? Unfortunately, it's too expensive for me. <laughs> <laughs> I checked the, the cheapest perfume is $50. The cheapest part Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah. And that's like the small bottle. Although it's called cheap and cheek, but it's not cheap at all. And I, when I look at the cover of the book, Jeremy, Jeremy Scott, you, you showing just now, it's black and white. I, I was thinking maybe it's. Uh, someone who lived in 1950s, but actually he was born in 1975, right? <laughs> so he's only 46 years old right now. Yes, uh, it happens to people who work in the art field. They can look very young or very old. 
<laughs> the actual age, right? Yeah. Okay, now time to go to Fajar. Okay, if there's no more questions, we can move to Fajar. Okay, so because it's almost the time before 16.15, I will just make it quick. Okay, can you see my screen? Nah, now you can, yeah. Uh, yes. By the way, I apologize if there is some <laughs> YouTube red line there uh, because I took this from the presentation that I uh, share last week in another book club. Okay, so today I am going to talk about this book about digital minimalism, choosing a focused life in a noisy world by one of the most famous author, Carl Newport. So, wait, come on, next. Okay, uh, I just want to ask you with the first question. The first question is, uh, in your opinion, how many hours you spend uh, on your gadget? Anyone? Anyone knows? <laughs> Why are you smiling? Three, four hours. I guess the last time, last time was correct, yeah. Yeah, last time was correct for Pipit. Uh, the others? Let me check my screen time. Yeah, my screen time was four hours, six, I think. Six hours in average. Of five. Ah, yeah. So in Indonesia, at least, uh, the average uh, time, I do, my God, uh, I think the the PPT was crashed, so I don't think it's safe. And but uh, anyway, I already memorized the the slide anyway. So on average, Indonesians spend about eight hours on gadget. And uh, if you think about that, the waking hour for for us uh, minus the, the sleeping time is about sixteen hours or uh, seventeen hours. And we if we deduct that by Gadget time, we only have like seven hours or uh, eight hours, right? So uh, you can say that uh, in modern era, we our life is very dependent on gadget, uh, and maybe sometimes it becomes the center of our world. Uh, so because of that, uh, we need some measure, some way to be able to. Uh, balance ourselves with uh, so we still need to enjoy the facility of the gadget social media internet etc uh, but at the same time we don't want uh, those things to be the center of our world we don't want them to to like uh, that uh, or urge us what we are going to do or how we feel so because of that, there is a term that is called uh, digital minimalism. Digital minimalism is basically uh, a concept where you uh, use the technology uh, only uh, minimalistically, uh, or what I mean, in a very optimized way. Uh, let me give you an example. So for example, uh, sometimes we, I watch Netflix for about maybe a three episodes in a row, two episodes in a row, right? And actually, yeah, to be honest, it's kind of excessive, you know, <laughs> unless you have uh, plenty of free time. Uh, and in this book, uh, this urge us to use the technology uh, optimally, uh, op to optimize the benefit from the technology. So for example, uh, there is a uh, there is a, what I what to say. There is a, if you spend too much time on the movie, uh, the the level of the enjoyment is not very high when you are on the third uh, episode. But if you uh, dissect that separately, uh, enjoy it bit by bit the enjoyability will be much more 
uh, optimal. Um, other social, uh, other example is that, for example, the usage of the Instagram, maybe uh, Instagram is very useful to catch up with our friends, sharing uh, what they are doing. But if this turn into a mindless uh, scrolling, scrolling, it will be not very effective and it will not be really good. So, uh, and this book also uh, talk about um, the internet and digital fasting. This book teach, uh, encourage us to do some digital fasting for about 30 days, although maybe you can try seven days if you can make it. Uh, and basically you only, uh, you do not use any technology that is optional. You can still use WhatsApp uh, or anything that is uh, part of your work obligations, but you can try to limit the other optional technology. And after, after that fasting, after that 30 uh, days fasting, you can uh, let the technology and re-enter again your, your life again. And you, you will be more mindful on what technology is uh, beneficial you the most instead of jaya, uh, instead of just being uh, followed by your habit of your technology use. Okay. <laughs> mm, I think that one something that I uh, disagree with this book is that the the author himself are not really um, quote unquote. Uh, he's already a very uh, self-controlled person. <laughs> you know, he's the author of deep work uh, already. So he's not uh, he's not a gadget addict, quote-unquote. <laughs> so he's not, uh, he, he doesn't have the same perspective with many Indonesian at least. And, and I think that uh, when, when it comes to changing our behavior, uh, this logical, uh, this logical uh, suggestion is not very powerful. I think that uh, emo uh, emotional uh, suggestion is much more powerful. So I think that if only this can be different instead of just logical argument, this will, will be much more effective. Okay, I think that's all. <laughs> Any question? I have a question. Yep. Have you tried even one of the tips that uh, he mentioned in his book? Just yeah, because I, you don't, just because you have a, a, a bias about the the author <laughs> that is is not a gadget addict, so it's easy for him to say that. Then you. Uh, easily uh, ignore what everything he mentioned in the in the book. Have you uh, ever tried? That? Yeah, I have tried that for about. Uh, yeah, so basically, I do the digital fasting for uh, for thirty days from the original plan, but in the middle of the the fasting, I simply forget. <laughs> so forget the fasting, and I return to the old habits, and I think that. Uh, what makes me uh, keep on the fasting journey is not necessarily about uh, digital minimalism. It is just about my own personal reason, my own need to limit the social media. And I think that um, the from what I feel, yeah, the the arguments from the books it's not emotionally engaging for me. So uh, it doesn't work uh, to, to motivate me to continue pursuing the, the digital fasting. But if I rely on my own personal reason, I become motivated again. Yeah, maybe I have some bias. <laughs> I admit that, sorry. <laughs> Question, Pajar. Yeah. So actually, I read the book uh, two or three years ago, but 
I, a lot of the viewers said, and I agree with this, the book can be just 10 pages, actually. Yeah, agree. Instead of long, right? So a lot of reviewers said the book talk about minimalism, but the book is not minimalist at all. It's maximalist. <laughs> yeah. The essence is only 10 pages, but it's just like, oh, you know, keep repeating the same thing. So do you think that's true? Or, or yeah, I agree with that because the most important material is on the first chapter and the second the rest of the chapters are just a bonus and even at the end of the book i was like it is so predictable i don't want to continue so i just i just i just decided i don't want to continue this book again oh yeah i think that if i can give the score i think this is 3.5 lah yeah not not something that i recommend to be honest you can just simply read the uh, the summary, and I think that sum ups your sum, sum ups the book. Okay, anyone else? But but again, I think it's I I still suggest you to try the digital fasting and try to experiment and try to find the uh, leisure activities that you enjoy without any use of technology. For example, it turned out that I like cooking uh, and also uh, sometimes I like writing. And uh, if I don't do the digital fasting, then maybe I will not discover that. Yeah, I, I read the book uh, a few months ago and uh, one thing that I keep doing it like until today is I stop reading uh, online news. So <laughs> every time there is a news, uh, people share in social media. I just don't read it yeah, because uh, yeah, we don't want to uh, trap in an endless news. Once we read a news, and then there is a link. Uh, maybe you're interested to read this news, and it's never ending, just like uh, running in a hamster wheel. <laughs> never get off yeah and I, I i i prefer to subscribe into one of the newspaper in indonesia uh, harian kompas and i subscribe the digital version and i uh, paid this amount of money and i found that the news is quite more uh have a quality have more quality in in the in the in the news not just bombastic uh header uh, there is a uh, useful content in there. But the articles from Compass are way longer than other newspapers. Mm. Yes, with a lot of data. So one article can be half page, and the half page is big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this Compass has very long article. Mm. Yep. And uh, when I compare it to the printed version, so my dad still subscribed to the printed version of uh, Republica. It's, there are only a few pages. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the Republica cannot uh, raise the price, but at the same time, the, the, the cost is keep rising. So they lower the, the amount of the page. So I think that subscribing to digital version is the best. Okay, any question? Otherwise, we can uh, conclude our meeting. Uh, wait, can we share what the book we want to read or we are reading currently? Oh, oh yeah. Now, uh, so please, Mr. Iman, can you? Oh, the summary of the book. The no, the, the book that the... you are going to read the next read or current oh, reading. Oh yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my current reading is uh, I, I start reading since two days ago uh, The Architect's Apprentices. So yeah, it's from uh, Elif, Elif uh, Shafak or some, I forgot the name of the other. 
yeah maybe uh, for, for our next meeting we can uh, look at them oh kayu very controversial you're lying <laughs> <laughs> so what are what are we what are we doing now? Sharing oh, showing, uh, the, the, the oh, next, showing just showing. Oh, just showing. Astrophysics for people in a hurry, but we all Okay, why why don't we just uh, show the book and then just take a picture? Take photo, yes. Okay. Yeah. For today, I will show my Alan Japanese now. So Nihongo. Nihongo, yeah. I learned Japanese in 2003, I think. Ima obete maska? Already forgot everything. Oh, wasureta. Zanen dakara. Okay, widodo mateta. Widodo. Oh, philosophy teras, very classic, ya. Yeah. Uh, turn off your blur, Fajar. Ya, yeah, Fajar blurnya. Fajar yang nggak blur? <laughs> Your your phone got blurred as also. Maybe oh, that's blurred. the graphical anyway. version of Philosophy Terras. Oh, sebelum bisa pat ya. Okay, one, okay. two, three. I want to read that book, Mas Farin. It's from Farudin yes. Faiz. Yes, Ustad right? Farudin. Yep. Oh, Prof yes. Farudin Faiz. Okay, done. So, Let me check the photo. I took many. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Right, so exactly one hour, although it's 4.15, but 2.15, right? So when is the next meeting again? Because this is one, two, three, the fourth week. <laughs> we keep postponing, postponing. <laughs> Should we just keep it at the fourth week? Okay, one, two, three, then 28th of August. Should be okay. Yeah. okay. Who wants to be the next moderator? We do you want to be the next moderator? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 See you 28th of August. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you.